this lecture is on ultrasonics which is another technique of NDT which is predominantly used in uh, condition based maintenance as a non destructive test technique to evaluate the effectiveness of for example, welding, detection of cracks uh, and so on. So, we will look into the principles behind this ultrasonics in this class, few applications and a recent development in ultrasonics that is the phased array technology which is used in getting an overall idea while doing an ultrasonic scanning on an equipment. Okay. So, uh, essentially ultrasonic waves are uh, sound waves and uh, these waves are as you should define ultrasonics any wave above 20 kilohertz though in the case of uh, ultrasonic which are used in fault detection we use signals higher to frequencies of 1 megahertz and so on. These waves are very directional and then uh, they can uh, propagate in a media and so on and we will see how this the propagation in a medium is affected if there is a defect and then how we can identify those defects. Ultrasonic wave another important principle of ultrasonic wave is the speed of the wave is dependent on the material property. Okay. So, for example, okay. for example, in steel the speed of sound is about 5000 meters per second. So, one needs to know the different speeds of ultrasonic sound waves in a material and then this wave you know once it is incident we will look into the suppose this is an ultrasonic wave front going in this direction and there is a certain depth to which it can go that depends on the power of the ultrasonic wave that depends on the frequency of the wave the diameter of the wave and so on. So, that is what is used in the transducer design. So, essentially in ultrasonic we send a wave and depending on the impedance another important concept which I am going to introduce in acoustics is what is known as the impedance. So, z is the ok. For example, I have a medium of certain impedance z 2 which is p 2 by v 2 and the impedance of this medium is z 1 which is p 1 by v 1 where p is the acoustic or sound pressure, v is the velocity. Okay. So, depending on the relationship between z 1 and z 2, some will be incident, some will be transmitted, some will be reflected and so on. Okay. So, the impedance of the material if z 1 equal to z 2 the wave would get transmitted without any no reflections, no reflections. So, this is the physical principle or the physics behind such sound waves. So, depending on the intensity of z 2 uh, sorry the reflected wave intensity and the incident wave intensity we can find out some clue as to what is this z 2 of the material. Now, if the there is a difference in the impedance this reflection coefficient which is i r by i i will be dependent. Okay. They will vary which is nothing but a function of z 1 z 2 and from 
uh, acoustics, you can find out what is the relation between reflection uh, coefficient, between the transmission coefficient and so on. Now, if there is a defect in the material, say in the form of a crack or a void, defect in the form of crack or void in a material, this wave front is going to get reflected sorry z 1 z 2 and some new z star. Now, if I move this this is a probe if I move this probe along the surface of the body and then this incident wave is set there will be instances when the intensity of the reflected wave will be different than the intensity at this location. Say for example, I r star at another location it will be maybe I r. So, by knowing the difference of this intensity we can get some clue as to what is wrong in the material and so on. So, this is how ultrasonic waves are used to find out the presence of a defect which in effect is because of a change in impedance. Another we use we make of ultrasonic wave is if you look at this way this is a material and we send an ultrasonic wave so, this is z 2 this is z 1 because it strikes a uh, impedance uh, uh, um, discontinuous boundary there will be reflections and this can be a trans receiver. So, if I if I move this probe all throughout I can do couple of things first is with time I can see some ultrasonic wave intensity. Okay. So, this time period is nothing but responsible for if this is L the thickness of the material. So, the time period will be C by 2 L will be this time. Okay. T. So, indirectly if I know the time period between such intervals where I send the wave and get the reflected wave and if the speed of sound is known I can find out L as 2 by 2 C and this is the principle behind what is known as ultrasonic thickness gauge. This has lot of industrial applications. For example, in a pipeline, pipeline has certain wall thickness. this is the pipeline and this is to have a certain thickness say T is its thickness. Now, this could be carrying some fluids in a plant could be some some fluid which could be corrosive or other ways there could be scale formation. because of impurities. So, what would happen over the time either material, material would get deposited or material would get depleted because of corrosion. 
So, from the outside if I put such ultrasonic probes which I am writing as u t. So, and then try to measure the new thickness t star or t dash. So, these thicknesses will be in one case t star is greater than t in another case t prime is less than t where t is my original thickness. So, this kind of uh, probes are used for measuring the thicknesses of pipes in chemical plant, process plant. Over the years, you would not know from the outside whether the pipe is having certain deposits in the forms of scale or pipe has got corroded to a certain thickness. So, if you do a regular scanning by an ultrasonic probe along the length of the pipe, you can see whether the thickness variations are there. This is one application. Another application is many a times you know we have been to plants you know wherein you know uh, uh, I, I know a case of a paper mill wherein uh, this uh, the owners of the paper mill actually bought a paper mill the whole plant okay, out of uh, the eastern Europe in uh, from Romania shipped them to India and installed it in a location in India. And, uh, they started producing uh, papers, you know, the plant was in place, but they were never sure as to what is the dimensions, because they never had any drawings of the sections of the critical sections of that plant machinery. For example, in the paper mill, maybe in some of my earlier classes, I had shown you the figures of those paper mills, there are a lot of rolls and actually these rolls are held on frames, you know, frames. Uh, this sort of thing cross section okay, and the, these are, these are uh, bolted to the foundations. I am just doing one of the front views, but nobody knows you know there are series of such frames you know put in the plant where the this the paper will roll. roll and this is the frame which is of course, put on a foundation on the soft floor. So, in such a plant there were cases where the thickness of this though they knew this was steel, but nobody knew what was the thickness of this material. So, in such a scenario now we, we used to put ultrasonic probes and then we are able to measure the thickness and then we could reconstruct the entire plant machinery drawings in terms of once we knew their thickness, we want to measure their dimensions. So, what I mean to say is a lot of unknown thicknesses can be measured using ultrasonic probes, because you have access from the outside and then you can know the thicknesses on the appropriate places. This is this is one area where ultrasonic is used. Now, this wave you know I have not told you about the type of wave you know what is the type of wave as you will know these are all sound waves and sound waves and structures can propagate as you know shear wave or uh, surface wave okay, and sometimes as longitudinal wave and speed of propagation of these waves are different and you know, if you look into any book on acoustics they will give you the equations of these uh, waves which are propagating in solids fluids and uh, depending on the type of wave the speed of sound in these materials are different and we will show you one general case. For example, this is a view wherein uh, this is a body. So, if I have a normal beam probe and this actually is perpendicular to the structure and this A is actually a longitudinal wave. Okay. Now, if I move it along this probe at an angle, now this angle could be 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees is going to produce a shear wave and this shear wave is going to get uh, reflected okay, out of this area, because this discontinuity and then we can uh, uh, see if, if there was a defect in the path there will be a reflection at a different angle. Okay. So, this kind of waves can be produced by having an angle beam otherwise or we can reduce the angle 
like a total internal reflection and then this will be almost on this surface. So, we can generate surface waves. So, and these are generated by this ultrasonic probes. Okay. So, what is the this ultrasonic probes? What generates ultrasonic waves? How do we physically generate these waves? Essentially, what happens? There are in a transducer, we have certain piezoelectric material. Material, and if a small piece of piezoelectric material is held in a casing with the right amount of stiffness, okay. This has a natural frequency f n. This could be equal to maybe one megahertz, or so. Very stiff and thin, short, less mass element. So we'll have a very high natural frequency. So if I excite this piezoelectric crystal by an oscillator, where I can generate a forcing frequency equal to 1 megahertz. This is going to resonate and then I will be able to generate ultrasonic waves. So, this is a very simple principle of having a piezoelectric crystal P crystal, which could be made to resonate by a frequency which is equal to its resonant frequency and then we can generate such ultrasonic waves. And these waves if they are normal, they will be longitudinal, they could be at an incline, they will be shear. If I make it more inclined and finally, I can get a surface wave. So, the same probe depending on its geometry can be used to produce any of these three types of waves. So, one such waves have been generated by an ultrasonic transmitter. Okay. We can now have this wave propagating in a material and then depending on the impedance of the material because of a defect, discontinuity, void, crack, we can get a reflected wave and depending on the intensity of the reflected wave in comparison with the intensity of the incident wave, we can get as to some clue as to what is the change in the impedance and what where is the defect and so on. So, ultrasonic application if I was to just briefly write down what are the applications of ultrasonic waves particularly in CBM. One of course, was the thickness measurement and the other is what is known as the void or crack detection. And they are of course, all NDT techniques. And this void and crack detection has a lot of engineering applications. Another one specifically for ultrasonic is weld defect identification. In some critical applications where uh, welding is done, there are many codes like the ASME codes, ASME well codes, which mandate that all welding have to be checked by ultrasonics. So, these are a lot of engineering applications. Another applications uh, I will uh, tell you which uh, coming out of Kharagpur, we have a big uh, relay workshop here and uh, I must tell you. So, if you look at the railway wheel set, okay, this is the axle.
flange and the tread. Okay. Imagine in a railway axle, if there was a crack which was internal, which has developed maybe some initiation was there because of a weak material or something and over the time this crack has become alarmingly big. Time will come this crack is so severe that there will be a failure of the axle. Now, so, you can imagine the disastrous consequence of an axle railway axle failure. Okay. So, how can you detect such internal cracks? Obviously, it is not visible from the outside. So, what they do in the railway workshop is they have an UT probe and if you go to the workshop, you will see these guys will be scanning the entire surface of the axles over a certain period and they have a periodic inspections of the axles. axles. Okay, coming, we will we'll come back to the example of the uh, welding uh, pretty soon. So, the principle of ultrasonic uh, transduction which I just mentioned to you that we have a usually a piezoelectric crystal which is made to resonate at its natural frequency. So, this ultrasonic wave is generated and the shape of the ultrasonic uh, transducer enables whether the signal is longitudinal or it is in a shear mode or it is in the surface wave. And then we also have a receiver and uh, another technique is we can generate series of ultrasonic waves and then it in one go I can have uh, many ultrasonic waves going in as a array and that they will get reflected back. So, this helps us quickly find out the defect. So, this is one of the latest techniques which are, they have been using in ultrasonic and we have one such in our uh, lab and which you can see in our uh, website www.iitnoise.com. So, all these instrumentations are available particularly the ultrasonic phased array. probe. I will come to that uh, discussion uh, at, at the end. So, uh, if I was to explain to you how this ultrasonic wave interacts, essentially this is the piezoelectric, this is a material, this is a material which is, uh, which is being inspected, this is an ultrasonic crystal and then uh, this is the incident beam at an angle this beam will get refracted some part of it will get reflected and usually we have a sound absorbing material here uh, sorry um, absorbing material so that because we do not want any information from here rather we are interested to where this beam gets reflected okay and then looking at this reflected beam we can find out the intensity of the where this defect is and so on So, fault detection by ultrasonic probes, one is this internal crack and voids in any type of material both metal and non metal and then is the thickness detection. Another uh, very big advantage of ultrasonics sonics is it can be used both in metals and non metals. You all many of you may be familiar you know, the doctors use ultrasounds for you know, your you know, finding out the ultrasound you know, sonography to find out if something is wrong with you some element is there okay. and these are essentially non elements. Only thing is that we have to know the speed of sound in that medium unlike some other NDT techniques where they have to be metal like the eddy current eddy current testing or magnetic particle detection 
method okay they have to be metals but ultrasonic is it can be used in non metals so this is where it is advantageous though in many engineering structures we have what we know as the uh, usually made out of steel now i will give you an, another example how is ultrasonic used for weld flaw detection so for example if i have two plates which are butt welded so there will be some sort of a chamfer angle and these two plates are put together so there will be an weld deposit i am showing this weld deposit weldment or weld deposit and this is plate a this is plate plate b so what happens is you know if you, if you can think of it this is a long plate and then there will be this kind of element okay so to see if this element has is effective or not what you can do is i can put a shear wave probe i can put a shear wave ut shear wave ut probe so what it essentially does it sends a beam and then it gets reflected okay and this gets into the weldment and i can be traversing this weld probe one by one okay along the length of this weldment and whenever there is a flaw in the weldment if there is a flaw here the intensity of the reflected wave is going to change okay so if i get an image of all the intensities of the ultrasonic wave along this line very next to the weldment i can see a high intensity which corresponds to this kind of a defect here okay so that is how the every weldment is checked against any internal weld defect this is not possible by any other technique this this internal defects are not visible to the uh, open naked eye so only thing is that nowadays there are many systems wherein this probe is traverse traversing this traversing is automated okay and then there are softwares and through good gui software where the traversing is control one can get an image of this uh, length okay and depending on as many such weldments are there we can have the uh, picture of the weldment another very important aspect while doing such ultrasonic probe is how do we ensure that the ultrasonic wave which we have generated is actually going and then getting reflected and not getting reflected from this surface no reflection so to ensure that happens usually a coupland is put and this is nothing but a water based gel so that good high signal to noise ratio of the ultrasonic wave is uh, generated and so the all the energy ultrasonic wave gets transmitted to the medium okay. 
So, this has to be one important thing and the surface in, in for example, in this case of no special treatment of this surface is required apart from that a layer of coupland is to be put maybe a layer of coupland is to be put. Okay. Now, depending on the nature of this traverse or the image there are certain scan modes in ultrasonic. We will come to the scan modes pretty soon. So, this is another example wherein a thickness ultrasonic thickness probe is being used in the laboratory to measure the thickness of a material. This is actually a steel block and if you will see here uh, this is about you know, we have put the centimeter scale here this is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 about 100 centimeters okay, and this is about 32 with an eye approximation and this is maybe bearing 2 mm of the gap here which has been artificially created to explain to you or demonstrate to you how this ultrasonic UT probe the red one is the transmitter and the other one is the receiver in built into this probe. So, this has been calibrated this is an ultrasonic thickness gauge this has been calibrated to measure the thickness of steel by in this thickness gauge we have entered the speed of sound of ultrasonic wave in steel as 5000 meters per second and this is measured as 68 millimeter. Okay. So, this can be used to measure the thickness and this is the principle behind this ultrasonic thickness gauge. Another one was this one was a metal surface we would not like to measure its thickness from the outside. So, 1.7 if this is not possible to measure by a ruler or by a scale because you do not have access to the other side of the material and you can see this fluid like gel like thing that is the coupland which has been put between the material and the ultrasonic probe to measure the thickness. Okay. So, coming to the scan modes there are three scans a, B, C. So, A is a scan wherein at a single point I do a measurement, B is actually a surface scan or I would say a linear scan quite not two dimensional. So, if I on the on the weldment I can get do a B scan, but then a series suppose this is a this is a top view of a material. So, this is an A scan at any point this could be a B scan okay. and series of such B scans is actually represent as a C scan. Okay. So, these kind of scan images A scan, B scan, C scan. So, C scan gives us a contour of where the defect is and depend if there is a defect at a particular location this should come up as a change in the color intensity. So, there are a lot of nice uh, uh, computer graphics in the softwares which drive this ultrasonic systems where you can get a colored image colored image of the entire surface. Okay, but you will notice that in such a scenario one has to anyway physically capture all the data at every A scan points and then put them together through your graphics. So, this becomes a little cumbersome uh, and little tiring. and tiring to perform individual scans at every point. 
Okay, though as I was telling you, particularly for weldings in pressure vessels, nuclear plants. aircrafts, bridges. Okay. The, some of the codes mandate that an ultrasonic scanning is done, ultrasonic test is done to find out the weld effects. Okay. And this is the principle people use to do uh, find out the defects in welding because the whole problem with welding because if you would have seen in uh, we will we'll be studying a case study in many of the scenarios because you know welding brings about high temperature in the material this changes the metallurgical properties of the material in terms of its grain size etcetera. So, particularly in welding they do what is known as post heat weld treatment post heat weld treatment. So, because you know if you if you weld you you go up to the melting point of the material and uh, maybe around 14 degree and then if you cool with time the temperature the rate of cooling has lo lot of influence in the grain size which is developed in the material. So, sometimes the materials can become brittle, sometimes they can uh, crack, sometimes they become so brittle that they cannot sustain large fatigue loadings and they would fail. So, what happens usually after a post heat weld treatment to ensure that there are no voids, no cracks, no defects it is mandatory in such critical applications in pressure vessels, nuclear plants, bridges etcetera, they do a uh, 100 percent ultrasonic testing. Okay. It is only because of this and that is the reason in many places particularly in aircraft etcetera, you will see uh, wherever possible people try to avoid the welding and then maybe go for riveting because with welding the most worrisome thing is that I could be changing the metallurgical composition of materials and when you will see in condition based maintenance many a times failures have occurred not because the plant was not running within the limits everything was safe in terms of the rotational speeds, operational speeds and loads, but because of an inherent material defect right in the manufacturing stage of the plant may be a conveyor. Um, system, the brackets in a conveyor system or the towers or the rails, they broke. I have, uh, there have been cases where the conveyor, the pulleys in a conveyor drive system just sheared off because the way the pulleys are made, I will just show you one configuration of one drive pulley. For example, if you look at the pulley, it is basically made out of two discs. Okay. Which is put at two ends and then there is a roll, cylindrical roll. And there is a shaft which is shrunk fit. Either sometimes it is right here or sometimes it is through and through also. And then, if you, and then there are bearings. Sorry. Okay. 
So, many a times these areas welding is done. This is one area where welding is done. Okay. There has been cases where we have seen that these materials fail in this crack occurred in such pulleys, they are known as drum pulleys. Okay. And this because this couple of reasons because no proper post weld heat recovery treatment was done. And so this kind of failures do not are not because of the operating conditions, operating conditions are good enough. Okay, but because of no proper heat treatment and such cases they recommend that an UT inspection is done. I will I'll report to you a case study where we did do the uh, metallurgical analysis of this failed structure and we could find out that there is a difference in the microstructure because of such harsh heat. Uh, during uh, generated during welding. Okay. Now, we will come to another technique, because by now you have you must have realized that by ultrasonic I can have a probe generate a wave see its reflected intensity by some way measuring the reflected intensity we get couple of things. One is the flight time duration which can be used to measure the thickness and if this thickness is because of a scale formation or because of a corrosion, we can find out the change in thickness. Next is this ultrasonic probes can be used to find out internal defects like a void or a crack in a structure. But you must have realized if there is a big structure and at every point if we have to do an ultrasonic scanning point by point this becomes a humongous task. So, recently what has happened is basically a phased array probe is been made it is basically a long phased array probe which is cut into many different piezoelectric elements like this and a phased arrays are in which the timing of the elements excitation can be individually controlled to produce desirous effects such as steering the beam axis or focusing the beam. So, through an electronic timing of these phased arrays, these piezoelectric crystals, they are equally spaced though. So, I can excite them in one go. So, all of them will generate ultrasonic waves or I can excite this earlier than this. So, then the flight time will be different and then I can steer them or I can converge them. So, all these operations are possible through an electronic controlling mechanism. Mechanism or a circuit. Okay. Now, such structure I mean this could be held together maybe there are 16 elements you know usually probes are found in 16 elements or 64 elements. So, imagine instead of one probe you have 16 probes or 64 probes in one go. Okay. So, for a quickly they can help you do the scanning. So, this is what is the phased array beam forming which happens. So, we have an equation unit okay, and then they will send the pulse and then we can get the uh, there is a flaw and then this internal the echoes will come because of the reflection okay, and then depending on the phase delay or depending on the intensity we can find out the defect location of the defect. So, but 
this require very precise pulsing and very precise estimations of calculating the time delays. Imagine you are talking about waves at 1 megahertz or 2 megahertz. Okay. So, this require very fast uh, because the time delay you know as frequency time delay is inversely proportional to frequency the higher the frequency time delays will be less and we have to be very careful or have very fast processors to capture such uh, signals. So, this is where is being used currently and this equipment we have in our lab okay, and uh, we use this and this is just to show you how uh, focusing can be done. Elements are pulsed uh, these are the elements with different time delays okay. and these elements if more delay is applied less delay is applied. So, depending on that they will they will focus on to a surface. Okay. So, these are all gimmickry of the electronic circuit which helps you generate a wave. So, I can focus it if I, I can steer it. So, all these scenarios are possible through such phased array processors. There is another example for shear waves because shearing I have to slant it. So, I have to steer it. So, I can gen generate a increasing time delay and then I can generate a steer wave uh, shear wave. Okay. So, this angle can be changed by the delay and that is the beauty of uh, such phased array probes. Okay. So, this ultrasonic probes sonic probes are available in many forms one is the longitudinal probe other is the shear wave probe. Shear wave probes are actually angular and then we have the phased array. Phased array probe is actually many such ultrasonic probes held together and through uh, electronic circuit electronic circuit we can generate. Okay. And sometimes the transducer or uh, trans meter and the receiver are held together in one unit. So, beams could be again used to focus they will all converge and finally, focus. So, in this these are all these are the phased error the green ones are the phased errors, but you can see by changing the control circuit many configurations are possible beam steering straight inclined asymmetrical and so on can be done and then this will help you to find out the flaws. Another is this linear scanning okay. this is what I was talking about there are certain active group the 64 element probes can then you can scan them and then the scanning method could be like this you can probe them. So, the entire surface can be scanned and you can get the intensity of these waves wherever there is a defect intensity is going to change. So, you can get an image a C scan of the uh, ultrasonic test and this is how it can be done. Okay. And all you have to do is hold the probe and just traverse it and there are 16 active elements. Okay into the probe and lot has to be done with the cable because sometimes this cables in this probes are also equally costlier. Okay. So, this is a probe and then we have a cable and the signal processing unit. Of course, this this interface with a good GUI based software. Sometimes care has to be taken because they are all piezoelectric uh, material. 
this cables you know you typically in a plant you know this is about this has come in standard length from 5 to 20 meters okay so you could be traversing the probe depending on whichever scan mode and usually c scan can be done with such phased array probe okay and then you can get a gui software where you can get an image of the system so this is one method by which the linear scanning is done you can see the graphics okay one by one so this is just by moving the electronic signal stimulus physically the probe has not moved probe has stayed on the entire surface but just by moving the electronic energizing particular element my wave are being generated so you can scan them accordingly so elect this is what is known as the electronic scanning or linear scanning it is the ability to move the acoustic beam along the axis of the array without any mechanical movement okay the beam movement is performed by time multiplexing of the active elements scanning extent limited by number of elements in the array number of channels in the equation system because this this is a multi channel equation system so this uh, as i was telling you instrumentation has come a long way to help the ultrasonic uh, in particularly condition based maintenance and recently earlier we used to have just single element ultrasonic probes having resonance piezoelectric crystals having resonating structures but nowadays through such electronic linear scanning we can produce beams and we can do the scanning almost immediately so these are some of the views of the different phased array scan sorry So, these are the different, uh, this is a sectorial scan, this is a linear scan, I am sorry. I okay, and then we have a linear scan and then uh, this is a combination of the scan, how they are arranged in the probe, different, different elements and then this can be scanning. So, all along the wedges you know this suppose is an weldment you can do the scanning and find out. So, the advantage of phased array ultrasonic ultrasound scanning is high speed electronic scanning without moving parts, improved inspection capabilities through software control of beam characteristics, inspection with multiple angles with single electronically controlled probe and greater flexibility for inspection of complex geometries and so on. Okay. This is one such phased array system which we have in our laboratory wherein you can get an image of the area where you are scanning and this is very similar to the doctor's uh, ultrasound uh, sonogram which you would have seen. So, we can see a defect uh, according to here in the C scan. Okay. So, ultrasound has become very popular because of this software which are available and uh, because of the advantage in phased array electronic systems which can be used for doing a quick scanning of systems and uh, finding out defects. Thank you.